seven souls, bound by either destiny or a sadistic god, will tread lands afar, challenge great perils, and probably steal some stuff. They are the Misfits of Dawnwood. Chapter 5 The Shadow Upon the Throne In days past, before Dawn's Keep ran red with royal blood, Gabriel von Gregor was roused from his studies as the noontime sun hung over the city. Dawnwood, a mighty city-state which sits on the southern coast of Leary, has been under the von Gregor family banner for ten generations. Five districts make up the city's structure, the shipyards where the city receives goods from foreign allies and where the dutiful home guard fleet guards the city's port from Winchester Bay. The marketplace, a melting pot of various cultures and peoples all selling their wares both domestic and abroad. The commons, where the average citizen may lay their head after a long day's work. The doldrums. The most infamous portion of the city, where the more nefarious of Dawnwood's elements can be found, either in a sleazy bar or the company of a mm, temporary lover. Towering above them all is the great Dawn's Keep, the seat of power for the Von Gregor family, where, on this particular day, a cacophony of excitement stirs. Word has spread among the aristocracy that King Doravinus Von Gregor is to make an important announcement to the assembled royal council. Sweat dots Prince Gabriel's brow as he makes his way through the long corridors of the castle. Rumors are spreading like wildfire, but he knows this sudden event could only mean one thing. Tetzla! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Left yourself wide open, Gabe. Damn it, Alistair. Now's not the time. And I told you to stop calling me that. Ah, I see. The stick up your ass is firmly in place, huh? Ugh. Come on, I was just joking. Oh, what do you think Father has to say? Did he buy Andromeda another pony? Why would he announce that to the council? Or maybe Zelia's pregnant again. Ugh. There's only one reason Father would call upon the council like this. Oh, wow! You think today's the day? It explains why you're dolled up. You should take note. You smell like a whorehouse. Wait, really? <laughs> Not enough lavender. Hey, since you're being named, we gotta celebrate! And what better way to live it up other than with your future subjects? We are meant to rule them, not to revel with them. No, oh, really. If you're going to be sitting in Father's chair, you really ought to be compassionate towards the people you govern. They'll like you more. Or at least appreciate you. Respect will do. Admiration will follow. And it's not a chair. It's the seat of power for our indomitable dynasty. Yeah, yeah, and ten generations of Von Gregors have farted in it. But I'm serious, though. Come out with me tonight. I know a great winery that even you couldn't scoff at. And while we're popping some grapes, maybe throw your cherry in the mix, huh? We are not discussing this. Come on, Gabriel. You know Father isn't exactly a cleric himself. Remember the harem? Where he plucked that lovely psychic personality? My first order when I'm crowned will be to place you in the stocks. Hmm. Kinky. Ah. I know that sigh anywhere! Captain Deckery, you're back! This must be a special occasion. Prince Gabriel, looking his finest. And Prince Alistar, awake before noon. Did Father summon you, Captain Stormliege? Actually, my timing is a fortunate happenstance. His Majesty sent me to apprehend the new drow slaver captain. I had just placed the brigand in the dungeon when I received the summons. Does it ever get old? The looks on the slavers' faces when they find out the great Captain Decree Stormliege is also a drow? Ow! Show some respect, damn you! <laughs> I took no offense, Prince Gabriel. To answer your question, Prince Alistar, no. It never does. Now, let us see His Majesty. <laughs> Father! I don't like it! It feels like it's crushing me! Corsets are all the rage among the Lenmarian aristocracy. You'll get used to it. Yes, you'll get used to the cracked ribs. Zelia, please. 
Forgive my impertinence, your majesty. What's keeping those boys of yours? I mean, I'm sure Gabriel comes galloping like a stallion in heat, but it could be hours before Alistar dislodges himself from his whore of the day. Alistar gets a horse every day? Oh, what about me? Oh, that's not what she meant. And you have a whole stable's worth of horses. Any more, and my cavalry will have to ride little piggies into battle. <laughs> what battle? Oh, finally. Yes? Your Majesties, Princes Gabriel and Alistair and Captain Stormleash are here. Send them in. Your Majesty? Good to see you back ashore, you old sea rat. How is your hunt? The drow corsair Curian Thousand Scars is currently stewing in the dungeons, Your Majesty. Fine work, as always. What? And nothing for me? Personally, I think I would look quite sharp in something like that. <laughs> Alistair, boys can't wear dresses. Girl, I could tell you stories. Don't stand too close to him, Andromeda. You'll catch something from the doldrums. Good morning to you too, Zelia. My sons, look at you. Your mother smiles from the ethereum. <sighs> Gabriel, why are you wearing your glasses? You don't need them anymore. I believe they give me an air of intellect, Father. But if you wish for me to discard them, I'll do so immediately. If they make you comfortable, then keep them. You're still a spitting image of me at your age. You honor me, Father. Alistar, good to see you with the sun up. Yeah, well, your letter was just dripping with passive aggression. How could I say no? All that matters now is that you're here. I do wish you would have shaved, though. You're one to talk, Kingbeard. Ah, your mother's wit. I must say, it's a shame that it's been so long since we were all together like this. As a family. Agreed. Perhaps a party is in order. Fine wine, a bountiful buffet. Or a beach day. A beach party! Yes. Your Majesty, the Council awaits your arrival. Right. Thank you. Of course, Your Majesty. <sighs> Decree, would you care to join us? It would be an honor, Your Majesty. All right, everyone. Big smiles and straight backs. Should be easy for you, Gabe. Well, with that stick up your... Be silent. Alistar, pay attention. Attention paid. <laughs> Presenting King Dolovinus Mascus von Gregor, Queen Consort Zelia Colleen Minerva von Gregor, Princes Gabriel Leith and Valorian von Gregor, and Alistair Kane, Valorian von Gregor, and Princess Andromeda Solstice Minerva von Gregor, with their guest, Captain Decree Stormleash. <sighs> you did great. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for your attendance. Although I do see we have an empty seat. It's of no importance, your majesty. Let us begin. The king will decide what is important, Jai. Mind your tongues. You're in the presence of the royal family. Our, Our apologies, apologies, your majesty. Your majesty. Admiral Ingvard, the fleet below served me well. I return the amulet in victory and glory. Oh. Keep it, Captain. Gods know you wield the fleet like a bard strums his loot. Those spectral devils would go wanting in my hands. Speaking of, when are you going to take this job off me? You and I both know who the real master of these waters be. Forgive me, Admiral, but my place is behind the helm, not a desk. Ah, oh, I tried. <laughs> About time! Forgive my lateness, your majesty. Busy catching that master thief, Captain Aluze? If you are referring to Mr. Pinch, your majesty, my sources say he's left onward. Well, then there will be fewer pockets picked in the coming days. Now that we are all in attendance, let's begin. Announce yourselves for the record. Admiral Jorith Ingvard, Master of the Sea. 
General Jahi Battlebrand, Master at Arms. Royal Magic Advisor Derequin Alexia, Master of Arcana. Overseer of the Commons, Trafor Dougal, Master of the People's Voice. Head Archivist, Ohaka Gardner, Mistress of Knowledge. Merchant Guild Leader Kool Again Von Maldigam, Master of Trade. Captain of the Guard, Jabari Uluze, Mistress of the Watch. Ambassador to the Woodland Queendom of Iona, Mithra Denencourt. Thank you all. Please be seated. Now, I know it falls outside of our usual schedule, but I felt you should be the first to hear my announcement before I proclaim it to the public. I'll cut straight to the point. For ten generations, the sovereignty of Von Gregor has kept Donwood in peace. Our ships have guarded the southern seas of Liri. Our alliance with Iona has allowed us to protect our borders indefinitely, and the creation of the Overseer title has allowed the people to be heard, regardless of position and status. To most of you, this is common knowledge, but I recite it because I wish for the legacy of Von Gregor to be fresh in all our minds for what I am about to declare. I will not always have the strength to bear the crown, and when that day comes, the throne cannot be vacant. Therefore, I wish to announce my successor. I knew it! What a glorious day for Tomwood! Well, indeed! This was a long time coming! I ask for each of you to swear fealty to him and show him the honor and respect you have shown me. You earned this, now, Gabriel. stand. Don't ruin next this for king me. of Dawnwood. I wasn't... My heir apparent, Alistar Von Gregor. <laughs> God bless this day! Congratulations, Prince Alistair! Unexpected, but most welcome, Your Majesty. An absolutely splendid decision, Your Majesty. Alistair will make a fine king. Oh, I will send word to my queen as soon as possible. Oh, she will be overjoyed to learn this news. What? What? Father! What is the meaning of this? It seems my son has something he wishes to discuss with me. Thank you, everyone, for attending today, but I must speak to my son alone. Meeting is adjourned. Celia, take Andromeda to her room. I cannot accept this! What can you not accept, Gabriel? This! This blatant theft! As your firstborn son, how could you do this to me? I have told you this time and time again, Gabriel. The circumstances of your birth do not dictate your right to rule. Then what? Merit? I receive top marks in all my lectures. I know our laws inside and out. I learned the titles and histories of every single member of the aristocracy. Commitment? I've spent my life sculpting myself into a proper king of Dawnwood while Alistair was gallivanting with peasants. <clears throat> you are right, Gabriel. You have always taken your academics quite seriously, and I know you would make for a great king. Then please, tell me. But I can't overlook your troubling perspective of the common folk. Those... Peasants, as you so crudely call them, are our people. They trust our family to ensure that tomorrow brings only peace and prosperity. You are fiercely learned and intelligent, far more so than I was at your age. Possibly even now, but that isn't enough. Yes, I cannot deny how irksome it is to me that Alistar carries such titles as the Prince in Rags and the Master of Brothels, but when your brother walks among the people, they embrace him as their own. How can I place the future of our kingdom in the hands of one whom her citizens do not trust? And how can you place the future of our kingdom with a man who doesn't even know the fundamentals of government? If you hadn't disgraced yourself before the entire council, I would have also announced your new title, the Right Pauldron, an advisor to stand with the king. In that way, Alistar will curb your pointed views of the common folk, and you, in turn, will guide your brother through the trials and tribulations of the throne. 
the light and the heat working together to ensure the longevity of our kingdom, of our people. <laughs> you mean a chaperone? A maid to clean up his messes for the rest of my- Gabriel! You have a brilliant mind, my son. One day you will realize my decision was the right one. Now please, enough of this. Go! <sighs> Nicole, my love, watch over our son. He will need your guidance. The right pauldron? Is that what years of preparation and painstaking diligence has earned me? A life in servitude to him? Come in. You... Gabriel, please. I didn't... Haven't you burdened me enough? What did you say to father? What did you do to strip me of my birthright? I didn't do anything. I'm just as shocked as you. You deserve... A lifetime of enslavement to the king of brothels. Is that what I deserve? No! I wasn't going to say that! I- I was being lectured on how to rule while you were learning how to swindle sailors out of their money. I was sharing tea with the council while you were guzzling ale with the drunkards. I kept my chastity intact while you paid a whore three silvers to take yours at eighteen. So tell me, your majesty. How it's fair that you receive the throne and the crown while I'm left as a lowly advisor. I'm sure you're desperate to pick your queen from your favorite brothel. Gabriel, please listen to me! Get out! I... I'm sorry. What now? J just bringing you your lunch, my prince. The chef took the liberty of preparing your favorite. Hmm. Lobster bisque. Yes. Thank you. This is most welcome. I'll send him your regards, my prince. Is there anything else you need? Send for Sarani Ravenhair, please. Tell her to report to my chamber as soon as possible. S Sarani Ravenhair? Are you sure, my prince? Is there a problem? Uh, of course not, my prince. I'll send a messenger to the doldrums immediately. Trifled by his father's surprising announcement, Alistair skulks through the halls to unwind outside of the palace. Stealthy as he is, the honorable captain of the guard is ever vigilant and silent in step. <laughs> Going out to celebrate? Ah! Jabari? Please don't tell my father. I have to... think some stuff over. I just... Go on, Alistair. I never saw you. Thanks. How about this one? 5,000 gold to kill... Uh... How you say this? Veal... Vlock... Velociros the Despoiler. Yeah, that. 5,000 gold. Says here he's... Oh. The ancient dragon that's been a thorn in Dawnwood's side for centuries? <laughs> yeah, no. How about a job that'll make us rich and let us live long enough to enjoy it? Right. Guess I'll keep looking. Hey, Telek. How'd the job go? Oh, hey there, Alistar. Not bad at all. Just an area full of gargoyles and one pissed off succubus. <laughs> How have you been? I've been... Today's been a lot. Care to get a drink with me? I got first round. Hey, I like your friends, Telek. You know what? Why not? They say it's bad luck not to get shit-faced before a new job, right? <laughs> <laughs> they call it the commons. Can you believe it? They try to lump us in with the rest of the common folk. But at least those people get their latrines cleaned once in a while. That's cause his highness doesn't want to be reminded that some of his citizens smell like piss. You smell like piss. I smell like shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, the man of the hour. Hey there, Mercer. Can I get a drink? Can I get a drink, he says. Absolutely, your highness. Would you prefer it in a chalice or a wine glass? 
<laughs> no, a uh, normal cup is fine. Am I missing something? Word in the palace is that Alistar is the heir apparent. The hell does that mean? You're going to be king? Oh, hey, congratulations. Ugh, I guess I am. Wait, Mercer, how did you know? A bartender never tells. Better start practicing your bows and curtsies, folks. We're just pulling your leg, Alistar. Here, on the house. Be sure not to forget about us doldrum folk when you sit on that throne, huh? Please, Mercer. How could I forget you? That ugly mug of yours haunts my dreams. <laughs> King Alistar Von Gregor. Sorry, pal, but I just don't see it. You and me both. I mean, I thought your big brother would be first in line. It doesn't work that way here. I thank goodness. I can't stand the thoughts of being under the reign of Silver Spoon. Silver Spoon? Yeah, sorry. We usually try not to say it in front of you, but it's what we call your brother. You know, from the old saying. Yeah, yeah, I get you. Say, Mercer, is Serrani around? Huh? You mean she's not with you? A messenger from the keep came asking for her about an hour ago. I thought you had sent for her to celebrate. From the keep? Weird. Oh, but don't you fret. We still have a primed and friendly selection if you need to, uh... Lighten your load a little. Hear that, ladies? Take extra good care of him tonight, and you could be his royal concubine. Or his queen. (laughs) Hey, Alistair, come sit with us. We just shuffled the deck. Oh, that's a bad idea. If he wins too much, we'll be in debt to the crown. And if he loses, he'll tax us. (laughs) (laughs) Are you done? Listen up, you bunch of iron heads. I'm not the king of Dawnwood. Not yet. Tonight, I'm the king of the cask. So who wants to drink with me? Yeah! Hooray! Hail to the king! Hail to the king! As the doldrums welcome their future king, the current sovereign has resigned himself to his personal study, sharing a drink with an old friend. That's what he said to me. I can understand his rage. While it was wrong of him to presume the throne was his, part of the blame does fall on you as well, Dorvinus. You're right, as usual. I should have been more forthright about my decision with them personally, without an audience. At least initially. I contend to the needs of the masses, (laughs) yet I falter with my sons. It is as your grandfather once said, blood is heavier than gold. Between us, Decree. Do you think I made the right decision? I do. Your father was intelligent, wise, and strong when he had to be. But he lacked charisma. It is true that Hagendir secured our alliance with Iona in his own stone-faced manner, and it was through that alliance when we received the fleet below, which allowed us to produce the force necessary to defend the southern seas. However, His neglect of the people led to the creation of the doldrums. They still refer to Hagendir as the Pig King. I see many of those same qualities in Gabriel. In that sordid garden of politics, he would no doubt thrive, but he'd wither in the fields. Alistar may not be as skilled a combatant as Gabriel, and he may lack many of the sharper aspects that come natural to those of high society, but he is well loved by the people, and he loves them in return. My advice in this matter, if you'll indulge me, is to give them both time. Gabriel will come around, and Alistar is wise enough to learn when it's time to grow up. (sighs) Well said, my friend. I would hope so. I have been tending the ear of the king for almost five generations. And yet for almost five generations, you've repeatedly declined the rank of admiral. You've earned the title a hundred times over. I thought ambition was natural for Drow. As natural as warts on a troll. But I have walked the summit of that great peak you call ambition long enough to know I am happiest on the ground. (laughs) (laughs) Here, to my sons, and to keeping our feet on the ground. Firmly planted. Uh, I need 
to find time on Bronze Dusk and Urban Moon for additional lectures. Eh, that is, if Prince Alistair will grace me with his presence on those days. <laughs> It ain't out of turn easy. Oh, celebrating, Prince Alistair. Oh, hey, it's it. How's it going? Oh, shit. What time is it? Did I miss your lecture? You're drunk. I am not drunk. Enough. <laughs> Let me walk you to your room. As the future king, it would be very uncouth of you to be seen like this. <laughs> <laughs> uncouth. Uh. <sighs> 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 well, you may be lacking experience, my friends, but I appreciate your enthusiasm. Take your money and get out. Shoot and cut loose, huh? <laughs> I guess you wouldn't be a cuddler like your brother. I said get out! God's above! All right! If this is how you're going to be with a professional, maybe you should try sticking it in chambermaids from now on. What's the point? What's the point of anything anymore? Gabriel. What? Who is that? You have been robbed, Gabriel. What is this? Show yourself! A deep shadow engulfs the room, snuffing out the light and thrusting Gabriel into utter darkness. As he blinks, trying to compose himself, the visage of something horrific flashes before his eyes, making him shudder. Heat radiates from the stranger, bearing down on the prince as two wicked eyes stare at him from the dark. Gods preserve me. talking about? Your father, Gabriel, and that rancid brother of yours. They've taken everything you are old, and for what? The ramblings of commoners. The coin-loving merchants with gold tumbling before their eyes. Who are they? Dictate the right to rule. I know what you are. You're... you're a devil. <laughs> Whatever I am, Gabriel. No, I am not your enemy. I have observed you with great interest. Your resolve and ambition are praiseworthy. But you lack the strength to claim what is yours. Strength I can grant you. In exchange for what? My soul? Nothing of consequence, I assure you. You're a malevolent pestilence. Why would I ever believe you? Because I am the only one who truly knows you, Gabriel. Innumerable pages of texts dotted by your tears as you struggle to memorize every word. The ink stains under your fingernails after excruciating hours of scrawling. And the scars. Penance for error. For failure. So much effort. So much pain. Only to become a glorified advisor. You have been robbed of everything you strove to achieve. Your throne, your crown, your dynasty. All being handed to a promiscuous prince by a mad king. You 
need to make it right. Take back what is yours. You... You're speaking treason! If he is crowned, Alistar will pillage your vaults of every coffer. Your beloved John's Keep will become his personal brothel. A kingdom doomed to dilapidation. No. Enough. Alistar has always been the crown jewel of Doravinus. Of course he'd be able to weasel his way to the throne! Enough! You earned this, Gabriel. No. My ruling is absolute. You will be the right pauldron, and Alistar, king of Dawnwood. Stop it! On your knees before your king! Gabe! Kneel before the king, Gabriel! Submit! If you're so smart, why aren't you on his throne, huh? Why can't you be more like your brother? <laughs> Stop! Forge the Black Covenant, Gabriel. And the crown, the throne, the power, the entire kingdom will be yours. Mine? As it should be. Yes. Yes, it is mine. Good, good. Do we have an accord? Whatever price you demand, devil, my body, my soul, you have it. Just help me reclaim what was stolen. Together. We shall extort the usurper's repentant cries and subjugate all opposition. Down with the false king. Yes. Spare not the supplanters, Gabriel. Spare them not. Pass your rightful judgment, as only you can, my sovereign. I am the true sovereign. Gabriel? I am owed, Father. Zelia, I suppose you are now a free woman. What would you say is your next course of action? It was Alistair who murdered my father, right? Yes. He was drunk. Very drunk and raving. Good girl. I didn't think you had the balls to go through with something like this. Consider me impressed. A proper king knows sacrifices are necessary for the good of his dominion. <laughs> The king is dead, Captain. The queen consort, she saw Prince Alistair kill him. Prince Alistair? What? what? Grab a battalion and form a perimeter around the castle. No one goes in or out of the keep, understand? I'll go find Prince Alistair. Go! For all we know, he's already tucked away safely with his friends in the doldrums. We should... I am not about to scour the doldrums before I get to the bottom of this. Now follow my order! Damnation! The hell's going on? Yeah, yeah, I'm coming, I'm coming. <laughs> Andy? What's wrong? What's happening? What? Are you sure? What do we do? <laughs> I'm scared! Under the bed, quick. And whatever you do, don't come out. Understand? If something happens, use my tunnels. I know I told you not to, but this time I'm giving you special permission. Head to the doldrums. They can help you. Okay. Go, 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 go! 
Where is it? Alistair, open the door. Hurry! Gabriel? Oh, thank the gods. Gabriel, what's going on? My ascension! Ah! A night of chaos. A daring escape. Gabriel stands now, a king of his own making, but one faced with a regime in danger. You have any idea what's going on? Not a clue. Must be important, though. Why isn't the guard so stirred up? Guess we're about to find out. My prince. Any sign of my sister, Battlebrand? None. I have Thymos Blackguard scouring the city. Blackguard, yes. The former bounty hunter. Recall him. I have a more pressing task for him. As you command. Citizens of Dawnwood, the sun rises over a dark day for our great city. A day that will forever scar the name Von Gregor and threatens the stability my family has kept for generations. Last night, my brother, Prince Alistair, murdered my father, your king. What? Is he serious? Why would he do that? Silence! Yes, it is true. The Queen Consort herself witnessed the act. Her screams drove the traitor away. To make matters worse, our own Captain of the Guard helped him escape justice. I stand here before you, my eyes burning with tears, and my heart heavy with despair. I stand here not as a prince, but as a grieving son, a betrayed brother, I feel your sorrow. I feel your anger. You want justice as I do. Today, I take up my father's crown so that I may amend the sundering Alistair has torn into our nation. I claim the title of king so that I may prove to you all that the Von Gregor name is still a legacy to be revered and respected. This will be my burden. Alistair has taken so much from us. Let us claim it back in blood. This can't be happening. Alistair wouldn't- Silver Spoon's talking out his ass. Come on, Serrano. There's only so much of this shit I can stomach. As the common citizen cries out for answers to this nefarious crime, one cowers just off the filth-ridden streets of the doldrums, the only place where she believes she will truly be safe. <laughs> oh, hey. Are you okay, kid? <laughs> Whoa, whoa, hey, 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 I'm not gonna hurt you. Now, uh, what happened to you? <laughs> oh, hey, hey, don't cry. Now, I know I look like a big scary rat. I mean, all rat folk do. But I'm not bad, I promise. My name is Zachary, but you can call me Zach. What's your name? And. <laughs> Andromeda. Andromeda? Oh, wait. Well, on you, Alistair's... Jitsu, check down there. And you, you're with me. I don't care if we have to dig into the most shit-crusted latrine in doldrums. We're not leaving until we find her. <gasps> Please! Don't let them take me! Hey, no problem. Come on, I'll take you somewhere safe. In the passing of His Royal Majesty, King Dorovinus Mascus von Grega, and the condemnation of the traitorous former Prince Alistair Cain Valorian von Grega, the crown of Dawnwood therefore falls to Gabriel Lythen Valorian von Grega. By the grace of God and the blessings of the crown of old, may he rule with justice, with truth, and with honor. Hail! Gabriel Von Gregor, King of Dawnwood! Hail, Hail King, King Gabriel. Gabriel! Hail King Gabriel! Hail King Gabriel! 
Hail King Gabriel! Hail King Gabriel! Hail King Gabriel! Hail King Gabriel! Hail King Gabriel! And so my reign begins. And so my reign begins. Stay tuned for the next exciting chapter of the Misfits of Dawnwood. Good morning or afternoon, Scrappers. This is Master Mimic. It's that time again for shoutouts. Got Rue Ryder coming in as Jabari Aluze, then Dylan Duck as Alistair Von Gregor, the heir apparent. Brad J. Taylor, known as Thymos Blackguard, took on the role of Cooligan Von Maldigam, the leader of the Merchant Guild, who has a seat on the council. Then you have John Rosenbaum coming in as Gabriel Von Greger. He's then joined by the father of both Alistair and Gabriel, Scott Wilkins, doing the voice of Dora Venus Von Greger. Then you have their mom, Tegan Morris, who plays Zelia Von Greger. Then Jonalyn Alonso, playing Andromeda Von Greger. Then Corey Kowler played the malevolent creature that was able to whisper its way into Gabriel's mind. He also played General Jaihee Battlebrand, as well as the bartender Mercer the Stoic. GM Hakim then came in to play as Decree Stormliege. Liam Chesler played Jorath Ingvard, the Admiral and Decree's superior. Ian Luke Jones playing Dara Quinn Alexia. Ray O'Hare playing both Trafer Dougal and Zack the Rat who makes an appearance at the end of the episode. Vandra O oh as Ohaka Gardener, the Mistress of Knowledge. Athena Lee as Mithra Denoncourt, the Ambassador to the Elven Queendom of Iona. Kyle Randall did another three-parter, being Telic Winscar, Castle Servant Number 3, and Other Citizen, whom you can hear in the crowd at the end of the episode. Stephen Hack as Kimber. Then Chrissy Crystal plays Sarani Ravenhair. You had Matt Gonza, who played bartender number one, Royal Herald, and other citizen, who you can also hear at the end of the episode. Then you had Raven Anderson coming in from Darklands to voice bar patron number two and other citizen. Castle servant number two, bar patron number three, and other citizen, played by Claire Westcott. And she is joined by Eli Katz, who played bar patron number four and, again, other citizen. And then rounding up the other citizens is Rachel Schumacher, who also played Castle Servant number one and Bard Patron number five. Bar Patron number six was played by Matthew Huddleston, Patrolling Guard by Raphael D. Lastimosa, I hope I said that right, Concerned Citizen number one by Marley Kubitz, and then finally Concerned Citizen number two, played by Ashley Kraft. This was easily one of the most stacked casts that we've ever had the pleasure of working with, and there's going to be a lot more ahead. Chapter 6 is already in the works, and thankfully it's going to be kind of like a nice little breath of relief, you know, kind of slowing things down to have some fun for once. You know, not everything needs to be so harrowing. So get excited for Chapter 6, and once again, join us next time for the adventures of the Misfits of Dawnwood. Have a great one, everybody. <laughs>